We just got Q3 numbers from Tesla and inside of these earnings report, not only that, but also the conference call as well from Tesla is going to have a lot of ammunition for both the Tesla fanboys and the Tesla haters. We've got a lot to talk about on today's show. Better get into it. What is going on, investors? Hopefully, you guys are doing well out there. I tell you what, you're doing really well if you bought Tesla shares about five years ago. Exactly. You're up over a thousand percent, but over the past year, shares of Tesla have gone nowhere. And year to date, Shares of the EV automaker are down 14%, but could this be a turning point for Tesla? Can shares find a footing from a technical perspective? We will go over all of that on today's show. We'll take a look at the Q3 numbers. We'll take a look at it from a high level. We'll take a look at the conference call. We don't always do this for every company that we look at, but Tesla, I think, is relatively important enough that we have to go through the conference call because they have a different style of conference call. It's more free flow. It's more of a discussion, and Tesla made some big news on the conference call. I'll go over what that is here in a moment. Now, we'll also go through the earnings as a well vehicle sales slowing down to just two percent growth year over year so why is the stock of tesla up over 11 percent in the after hours we'll show you some of these things from a financial perspective which are absolutely absolutely driving the shares higher now Tesla, from a high-level perspective, had revenue coming in at $25.1 billion. It did miss expectations by about $490 million. They had growth year over year of about 7.8%. CapEx came in big time due to AI expansion, a lot of that compute power. You've probably seen Elon Musk post photos. Also, NVIDIA's Jensen Wong talking about it on the different types of interviews. The fact that Elon Musk has been going crazy building out this compute power. A lot of that has to do with the full self-driving, which we'll talk about quite a bit on the Q3 conference call. Elon kicked it off by noting that no other EV company is profitable. I think we can go through the financials and, and support that for the most part. Maybe some Chinese automakers do happen to show a profit, but here in North America, that is true. The energy and storage business is growing like wildfire. That's according to Elon Musk. And also according to the financials as well, as that business grew 52% just over the past year on a quarterly basis. Elon says the company is on track for more affordable models in 2025. I think this took some investors by surprise. The company really hasn't shown a lot of prototypes or models or really even hyped it for the most part. But they are saying not only on track for 2025, but multiple executives, including Elon Musk, said the first half of 2025. So we're just months away from Tesla releasing, an, we'll put this in air quotes, an affordable model, which after tax incentives, which could potentially go away after the elections just a week or so from now, the price of that car should be about $30,000 or under $30,000. We'll talk about more of that here in a second. The company, this had Elon Musk, probably has executives and the employees over at Tesla squirming a little bit as he gave vehicle guidance growth for next year. 20 to 30 percent vehicle growth next year. Some of that has to do with the fact that they have the more affordable models on track. Also, you have Cybertruck kind of meeting full production. They also noted that the Cybertruck is the third best selling electric vehicle behind the Model 3 and the Model Y. So all of those things contributing in Elon Musk estimation 20 to 30% growth next year. Now, CyberCab, which is the released or recently released and prototype model that they showed off, I believe it was last week or about two weeks ago, that will reach volume production in 2026. The company is aiming for about 2 million units per year from more than one factory, maybe as high as 4 million units when fully wrapped. Now, just keep in mind that Tesla just produced its seventh million car just this past week. And so the fact that the company is aiming for 2 million units of a car that's not even in production would be a massive achievement. Obviously, Elon Musk, probably the guy to do that. Now, 4680 is on track. That is the battery cell to be the most cost efficient battery in the North American market from a cost perspective and a cost per mile perspective. Now, full self-driving 13, which would be the next generation of the software, that should be going out relatively soon. And full self-driving by Q2 next year 
will be safer than humans, I, I guess, if it's not already. Now, whenever Tesla releases a significant improvement to full self-driving, They'll roll out a free 30-day trial to all Tesla owners. This is a fantastic idea. In fact, the way the company has transitioned full self-driving from being this multi-$10,000 software package, which literally nobody in the software business sells software that way anymore. You do it on a monthly subscription basis. Even at the enterprise level, we see that you are charged from a monthly or maybe even a yearly basis when Tesla did that, now I pay $99 a year for one of my Teslas to have the full self-driving. And when I was driving around Los Angeles this weekend, it came in handy. This is a great idea. It exposes more people to the software, which again, really comes in handy in certain driving situations. Now, Elon Musk says they expect to roll out their ride hailing to the public both in Texas and California. Now, they did stress this will be next year, and test, Texas, the state of Texas, will be faster from a regulatory approval given that California loves red tape and regulation. Elon Musk says the Optimus robot is the most advanced humanoid robot. I think figure one, maybe some other startups would contest to that, but that they have a good chance at being the most valuable product ever made and so certainly if elon musk is correct here the current valuation of give or take 700 billion dollars on tesla if he's anywhere half to being correct about optimus well certainly shares are incredibly undervalued now it says mega buck i meant mega pack factory that is opening in china this is significant because currently the company i think is only operating out of lathrop california which is not far from where this video is actually being recorded and the energy and storage business is growing like wildfire like elon musk said grew 52 percent year over year and now you are going to manufacture these things in china that is incredibly bullish for the company. Probably a little bit of a sleeper market. We'll go over the financials in a minute in terms of Megapack and energy. Now, is Tesla still on track to deliver a more affordable model next year? And the company said yes. In the first half of 2025 and with incentives, government incentives, maybe even state incentives in some places, under 30 thousand dollars elon says that the cyber cab which is the autonomous cab that they prototyped about two weeks ago is a different manufacturing process resulting in much better efficiency that's maybe why he projected maybe two to four million units rolling off the line when again the company has produced just seven million of its current vehicles now cyber cab will cost about twenty five thousand dollars that's according to elon musk and anything accordingly according to elon musk needs to be uh, taken with a grain of salt probably almost like a politician says it but i thought this was interesting he says it will be made available to the public so you'll be able to buy one. And so if you want to buy one for 25000 and never have to drive, that is certainly possible if it's uh, approved in your state. Now, an update on the semi-truck, which when you roll up and down Highway 99 here in California, you actually see these relatively often, obviously pulling some kind of Pepsi product in the Gigafactory in Reno. They showed some slides and some update photos on the earnings results. Well, that is coming along quite nicely and pilot production will be in late 2025 with volume projection of the semi in 2026. And Elon saying that they have, quote, ridiculous demand for the semi. And that is because Tesla's own fleet and the Pepsi pilot is proving out the model. The drivers that test drive these pickup trucks do not want to go back to their former diesel trucks. And companies are finding that they're saving significant amount of money per mile with the semi. Hence the strong demand that the company has seen. Now there was a question on the conference call. Will X and which is Twitter or formerly Twitter and Grok be available on the car? Elon kind of laughed at that question and, and kind of put it off to the side saying he was a small fry issue. Now, California and Texas full self-driving approvals. This is what the company is indicating by next year. They'll have full self-driving. I absolutely believe they'll get that in Texas considering the company has made a significant investment in Texas from its factories and kind of moving its headquarters there. California will be much more of a hurdle. And I say that with all due respect as I live here, but I don't vote for any of the politicians that put all this red tape in place. But Elon Musk would said. He would be shocked if they don't get CA approval by next year. Obviously, Waymo and others have some approval, but there's just lots of paper and regulation. Texas will be a lot easier. 
easier. Elon Musk later said that we should have federal approval process for autonomous vehicles. So instead of having to go to Texas and to California and Illinois and New York and Florida, it's currently kind of a state by state model. Elon said that the federal approval process should happen at the federal level. And he kind of indicated that if former President Trump is elected and Elon Musk is hired for a role there, an efficiency role, that maybe you'd be able to push that through. And I got to imagine, guys, as much, and, and some of you guys like to put politics aside, and, and you really can't. As an investor, you've got to face these things head on. And if you're not man enough to do it, turn off the channel, go give Fidelity and BlackRock all your money, and, and let the big boys handle these types of things. So look, Elon Musk has cozied up to the former president. And if in a week, a half from now, or two weeks from now, he's reelected, well, Elon Musk has got a beautiful position to push through any type of regulation that he wants, as long as it doesn't have to go through Congress, any type of executive action and those types of things probably might get pushed through again, like it or not. Now, what is the plan for 2025? They're going to have those cheaper models rolling out in the first half of this year. The company noted that getting 20% out of the cost of the car is actually relatively hard. But when we come over here to the financials, you'll see Tesla really reduced the cost of their car in the most recent quarter, driving to much higher profitability. Now, they're going to continue to finalize the design of the Cybercab in order to get it to high volume production. The mega pack factory in China, that's a sleeper. That'll open up in Q1. We probably see dramatic increase, I think, in terms of Tesla's efficiencies and revenue coming from mega pack and energy. Their literary refinery business should actually start to produce and continuing to expand the OEM, which is other brands like Ford and GM and others to use their charging network, which again is an underestimated, in my opinion, story over at Tesla. Now, there was a question about the Tesla Roadster. Elon Musk kind of laughed and said, sorry to the reservation holders. If you have a reservation for the Tesla Roadster, I will just tell you right now, I would not expect this thing anytime soon because Elon Musk indicated that it will be coming behind its other products which constantly have their timelines delayed that will likely mean the cyber cab the design isn't even finalized yet so I would assume with the Roadster you are years years with an S away maybe even longer than that how will the robo taxi roll out will it just be the cyber cab which they prototyped at that event or will it be the customer fleet so people like me who own teslas can i push it into the fleet elon says they're not 100 percent sure some chance that the hardware three vehicles which are the old older versions of tesla will not be able to have unsupervised full self-driving tesla said that they will offer an upgrade to customers for free that purchase the multi-thousand dollar software package my guess if you didn't purchase the software package you might have to pay a fee for that that's just me assuming that now elon says we'll have driverless teslas doing paid rides next year that is probably going to be in texas and possibly ca as well that would be california not canada and we'll see this will be a new revenue model for tesla and obviously this is leading to the fact that the shares are much higher now 12 percent higher in the after hours this is all incredibly bullish stuff now what is the relationship between xai and tesla xai has been useful to tesla multiple times helps improve its training times XAI, though, is working on artificial general intelligence or AGI, and Tesla is trying to make autonomous cars and robots. Those are different problems, and that is it, and we get to the nitty-gritty, the financials over at Tesla. Your total automobile revenues, that is going to have the bears pointing to this. They're going to say, look, 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 this company's core business only grew 2% year over year. The company did notice on the conference call that the fact that you have lower interest rates coming, that could spur more vehicle demand. And I think you look across the entire vehicle industry, there is certainly a impact of those higher interest rates on automobile sales, both new and used cars. You get further reduction in interest rates. Well, that certainly will help all, all, all automobiles, certainly Tesla, which has most of their vehicles priced near the middle to the high end of the market now that energy storage business look at this folks 2.4 billion dollars not as good as the three billion dollars they printed last quarter but year over year you're up 52 percent there guys i want to point you to operating margins basically your profit margin 
coming in at 10%. That is significant because considering last year you were at 7.6%, and even last quarter you were at just 6.3%. That is a dramatic, dramatic improvement, and you'll see that from an operating perspective. From a vehicle perspective, you had a big boost in other vehicle production. That is probably the Cybertruck. They continue to send me emails as I was an early reservation holder of the Cybertruck, but when I got my reservation to secure my Cybertruck, I actually lost my job, my full-time job that I had at the time. So I figured maybe, maybe buying a $100,000 pickup at the current time might not be great. Also, I continue to have two other Teslas, so I'll get that Cybertruck at some point. But you got to figure the bank is going to want to see some proof of income on an $80,000 pickup. In terms of deliveries, they were actually about what you'd expected with the low growth that the company had. Now, they continue to deploy more and more solar, 75% increase year over year. We'll show that to you from a profitability perspective. And the supercharger network, which I had to wait at one in Calabasas, California for like 20 minutes. So you got high demand on these supercharger stations and you start introducing these to more Ford and GM and, and other vehicles. Well, the profit from that business and the significance of that business is just going to continue. I want to highlight the energy and storage business is that is the fastest growing business over at the company, at least from a revenue perspective, $2.4 billion worth of revenue coming from that business. And then here you have your cost of revenues from the energy storage business coming in at just 1.6, close to $1.7 billion. So you printed about $700 million of operating profit from that business. It's relatively similar to what you printed in the previous quarter. So you got about a $700 million run rate from an operating perspective on that business. Now they were able to drive down their automobile sales cost. And so in an inflationary environment, this is pretty tough. They have redesigned the Model 3 and Model Y. We won't get into it, but it looks like to me, when you look at the vehicles, at least side by side, they reduce the number of parts required. And so that had cost over the past year, despite relatively flat or similar sales year over year, not much increase on the cost that it required there. So that had your gross profit over at Tesla skyrocket to five billion dollars last year we were just at 4.2 in the previous quarter you're at 4.6 billion dollars folks when you flow all the way down to income from operations that includes your r d spend which year over year actually declined your selling general administrative actually declined year over year this is why you have some people very excited that Elon Musk does this to the federal government because the company year over year increased its sales 7.8%, but drove down its operating expenses from $2.4 billion down to $2.3 billion. If the federal government were to do this, we would be able to eliminate or at least start reducing the national deficit here in the United States. $2.7 billion of operating income. That is a billion dollars more than you did last year. Folks, your total revenues came in at $23.4 billion last year. This year, $25.2 billion. And you added a billion of that additional revenue all the way down here to income from operations. You flow down to net income, paints a relatively similar story. $1.9 billion last year, all the way up to 2.2. This is why Elon Musk gets a lot of my respect because look, he says different things. Some of you guys don't like his politics. Some of you guys don't like his haircut or whatever. But when you look at this financially, and again, this is the investor channel, not we care about your feelings channel. This is as good as it gets. Now, could they grow their revenue more? Could they uphold a lot of the promises and the timelines that they've given in the past? Certainly we can criticize the company and we have criticized the company on that, but you really don't see a lot from a financial perspective that you can criticize this company on from a cash balance sheet perspective. They got a boatload of cash, no questions on the conference call about what they did with their Bitcoin, moving it to a different wallet. We didn't get really any indication on that. You have your digital assets, at least at the end of September, holding relatively flat deferred revenue down here at a liability gives you somewhat of an indication on the company's reservations or future reservations. Those came in at $3 billion, which is higher than almost every other quarter that we have on here, except for the March quarter. Overall, the company has a boatload of cash and is operating like you wouldn't expect an automobile company to expect. 
or run. Now, from a cash flow perspective, you got to imagine when you have operating efficiencies, they're going to show up in cash flows from operations. Look at this, folks. 3.3 billion of operating cash flow last year, 3.6 billion dollars of operating cash flow last quarter. That ballooned to 6.3 billion dollars in the most recent quarter. There is no car company doing this. And in fact, I'd stretch this out to say there is very few manufacturing company. I don't care if you're manufacturing Ozempic pens or you're manufacturing EVs, there's almost nobody doing this type of thing. Now they had $3.5 billion worth of capital expenditures in the most recent quarter. That was a billion dollars more than the previous quarter. Most of that has to do with the AI and full self-driving build out. So this is a capital expenditure that gets sunk in in a quarter, two quarters, three quarters. And then obviously if full self-driving can produce revenue in the cyber cab next year, also customers like me paying $99 or any customer that buys a Tesla and adds the full self-driving, this is something that has a long-term payoff. At least that's what the company and the financials will tell you. They didn't have to spend their money on really anything other than those capital expenditures. So the company added about $3.6 billion worth of positive cash in the most recent quarter. Folks, these are just beautiful financials. There's a lot of reasons why the stock is up 11%. I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that investors are buying in to 2025 being Tesla's year with the cyber cab, which introduction of new revenue streams there, full stealth driving, getting approvals, key approvals in the state of Texas, potentially out here in California. Elon Musk may be getting his man in the White House. That certainly could usher in a lot of good things for Elon and the companies that he operates. From a technical perspective, we are still holding this micro trend that we've been on, which is represented by this purple line. Very steep series of higher lows. Not yet, though, confirmed with the series of higher highs. We are going to want to get over the highs that we made back here at about $270 per share. In fact, we tested them twice. As the shares approach this 270 level, expect some overhead resistance. In the after hours, Tesla's trading close to $240 per share. If you're able to blast up above 270, you should find resistance at 290. If the company can continue this momentum, potentially with a Trump victory and potentially the promise of lower interest rates, also tariffs being put on other automobile makers, given that Tesla makes the vast majority or all the cars that are sold here in North America, they make them all here in North America. Tesla will be far less impacted than any other manufacturing company, certainly in the car business. Well, you could see shares push back up over $300 per share, which you will find resistance at that point. I continue to hold Tesla shares. I continue to be a proud owner of their vehicles. We will not fanboy this company like other people and other channels will do. We'll give it to you straight. And right now, from a financial perspective, in a difficult selling environment for the automobile business, the company is hitting on all cylinders. The fact that they have a mega pack facility opening up in China, probably the biggest market from a demand perspective in Q1 of next year, I would expect these revenues to continue to skyrocket. We've already seen that the energy and storage business is profitable. The wild card is if the company can deliver on an autonomous vehicle, generating revenue and driving miles and driving humans autonomously next year. If the company can prove that it can do that, well, things certainly look bright for Tesla in 2025. If the former vice president or the current vice president is reelected, well, all bets are off because the guns are going to be pointed at Mr. Elon Musk. I mean that figuratively, and I hope not literally. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video. We'll see you again very soon later this week for the Fang Stock Recap Show on Fridays. Join us again then. Until then, good luck with your investments.